Ladies and gentlemen, an octopus has 2,240 suction cups on its tentacles, and it has the ability to control every single one of them in order to hunt and survive in the ocean. In the same way, aspiring violinists should also develop an acute sensitivity towards the movements of their fingers, joints, tendons, and muscles, especially in the bow, where the smallest inaccuracy can ruin your sound. In this video, I will share with you five different exercises that will help you develop wrist mobility, finger grip, and flexibility in the joints. By practicing these different exercises, you will also be able to, like the octopus, develop skillful reflexes that will help you become more aware of the various joint and finger movements that it takes to develop higher quality sound. The first exercise will help you properly position and engage your thumb for a more flexible bow hold. The thumb has the most muscle mass on the hand, which makes it more susceptible to different tensions. The most common mistake that I see that causes thumb tension is the cupped thumb. It's when you basically cup your thumb into a position like this, which makes this muscle rock solid. This is something that you really, really want to avoid. So as you can see, there is almost no breathing room between these two fingers, which leads to a very rigid sound. Additionally, this will also cause the joint of the thumb to be flat. Uh, this is something that we never, never want to do in violin playing, is to have flat joints. And so the goal of this exercise is very simple. It's basically a repetition of bending the thumb back and forth. If you feel tense, try and massage the muscle mass right here in order to alleviate any tension that uh, accumulates. After warming up, try doing the same thing playing on open strings. The key here is for the bow to not bounce on the string, but to keep a consistent and nice flowing sound. The second exercise is quite simple. It's essentially a yoga dance where your wrist goes up and down, up and down, up and down. You shouldn't feel any tension doing this. If you do, it's probably because you're not relaxed enough in this part of your palm. So you want to really just relax this part and make sure that you can do this exercise comfortably. After doing the vertical axis a few times, try and do some horizontal movements. The key here is to not move the arm whatsoever. If you're struggling to do that, you can isolate the wrist by holding it and doing the exercises like this. After you've done that a few times, try and do some circular motions with your wrist. Again, not with the arm, solely with the wrist. And as you do it, try and enlarge the circle more and more. And so this exercise will actually help you uh, achieve smoother bow changes and help you avoid the, the kind of robotic sound we all hate. The third exercise is called the seesaw, in which you will exchange the weight of the bow between the index and pinky. If you've never done this exercise before, try and hold the bow at the balance point because it's easier and lighter to hold it there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to apply light pressure on your pinky, like so. And when you do, you're going to notice that your bow rises up. And then you're going to release the pressure and you're going to notice that it comes back down. You're going to repeat this process a few times so that your pinky can get comfortable with this motion. Afterwards, you're going to try and add counter pressure with your index finger. For example, when you press down on your pinky, you're going to press back down with your index finger in order to rise the pinky. And so you're going to do this movement a couple of times. Afterwards, you're going to add counter pressure with your index. So as you're going down with your pinky, your index is going to press down in order to raise the pinky back up. And so you're kind of adding a counterbalance with each finger. And so as you add pressure on the index, the pinky will rise. And then you add pressure on the pinky, the index rises. And then you're going to play with this exchange. And if you're lonely, well, now you have someone to play in the park with. And the goal of this exercise is to gradually move towards the frog, which is the heaviest part of the bow. Now, this will be hard if you try and go to it immediately. So try and maybe go one centimeter at a time. After you've done this for, let's say, 30 seconds, move one centimeter or two lower and do this here. You're going to notice that it's getting heavier and heavier. Move a little bit lower. Move a little bit lower. Until you reach the frog. If you still find that this exercise is tricky, try and practice it with a pencil or a pen while you're at work or at school. 
Once you become more comfortable with the movements, you're going to want to try this variation. You're going to remove the index and the fourth finger, and you're going to do the seesaw movement like so. Another variation is where you remove the third and fourth finger and try and do the motion like this. And if your fingers don't look like drunk Russian polka dancers, then you're probably doing it right. Finally, you're going to want to try this exercise sideways, where you're moving the pinky and index to make a horizontal movement with the bow. And it kind of looks like this on a frontal view. Always make sure that your thumb is nicely curved and round when you do these exercises. And never, never, ever flat. The seesaw exercise is a great way to practice finger grip so that you can later on achieve greater richness in your dynamics. The fourth exercise is a variation of the seesaw movement where you're gonna wanna do little rotations with your fingers like so. Kind of like if your fingers are rowing a boat. And so if you notice, the tip of the bow is actually gonna draw little miniature circles. Uh, if you want, you can do some bigger ones. You can do some smaller ones. You can even draw the whole solar system if you'd like. Ladies and gentlemen, the last exercise is called the push-up exercise. In this exercise, your fingers are essentially going to do miniature push-ups. This exercise consists of flattening out all of the joints and then bringing them back to a round shape, like so. The human finger has three joints, one here, one here, one here. Let's call them one, two, three. Excluding the thumb, which only has two. And so as you're bringing the joints back in, you wanna make sure that the top of the hand is completely flat with joint number one. And so you're gonna to wanna to practice gripping the air a few times like this. You can gradually try it with different objects, such as a pen, and then you're gonna gradually go towards your bow. Uh, now, if you've never done this exercise before, start yet again at the balance of the bow and do this exercise like you just did with the pen. Make your way towards the frog. If you're still struggling with this exercise, try and support the bow with, uh, with your other hand and do this exercise like this. Gradually let go of the pressure until your hand is able to do it by itself. It's kind of like when your parents removed your training wheels as a kid and pushed you towards a stop sign, thinking that's the best way to teach you to use your brakes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you truly take the time to practice these exercises, your sound quality will improve drastically. Now go practice.